hello and welcome to Diecast Restos. My name's Jason and this is the Lesney Matchbox 34 seat Volkswagen Camper. These were in the 1 75 line between 1967 and 1971. This is one of the later low roof versions which replaced the extended roof type that had a small initial run. And here is one of the high roofed models. Otherwise identical, the high roof gave the appearance of a pop up camper roof being in the raised position. Despite these being a shorter run, neither type is more valuable than the other. Production volumes must have been high for both. This one has lost a lot of its silver paint, while the other is missing a door, has a broken window pane and has had its interior table snapped off. The interior is complete on this version. Here is a high reef type in mint condition. And here is a Volkswagen Type 2 T1 that the casting is based on. I'll run through portions of this build in split screen, rather apt considering I'm restoring a pair of split screens. I've lost count as to how many VW Type 2s I've restored over the last few years. So to save repeating myself, I'll leave links to the previous builds that I've completed throughout the video talking about the history of the T1. The 34C camper replaced the 34B Volkswagen Caravette in 1967. I restored this in January 2021. The number 34 had an incumbent split screen since 1957 when the 34A Volkswagen Microvan launched. I restored that in August 2022. The 34C casting came out just prior to the Type 2 T2 bay window van's launch. The 34B had been in the range for four years by this point, so was due an upgrade. While the 34B did have an interior, a metal table and chairs, it was riveted on directly to the base. However, it lacked suspension. The upgrade allowed the model to have suspension that served as an extension to the new plastic interior. It retained the opening side doors, though the bottom attachment is to a separate piece of metal that has some extremely narrow rivets holding it on. To fit my reproduction door, I've had to bend it a little and then hammer it flat. But I've also had to file it down to size slightly. They look effective once all that adjusting has been completed. Anyway, now it's time to bathe this pair of campers in some caustic soda. I've managed to knock out one of the loose windscreen pillars between paint stripping and polishing the body. I kept hold of it though and I'll affix it once I've polished it all. All versions of the camper with raised or lowered roof came painted in silver with an amber coloured window piece. They all shared the same orange plastic interior. All had a black base plate with black plastic wheels. Some did have a towing guide or a raised bumper but were otherwise identical. Some of the later lower roof types had doors with larger handles and or wider windscreen pillars but these minor variations had no impact on value. As all were painted silver, none received additional body trim. The earlier raised roof types were likely adjusted to a lower roof casting due to the roof section possibly bending easily. Some sources state that there are probably a high number of rejects following damage or bending after they had been tumbled to remove them from the sprue. But both types were produced in large numbers. It was not considered suitable to be converted to superfast wheels in 1969 but it did continue on in production until 1971. Then for the first time after 14 years exclusively dedicated to Volkswagen, a non-VW casting replaced the camper at 34D. This was a generic Formula One racer with low friction wheels designed to take on Mattel. Now both of my castings receive an undercoat of light grey primer. I think this is certainly a prettier casting than its predecessor. I felt like the proportions were off with the 34B. The wheels were too small, the sunroof too large and the interior too basic in metal. This casting definitely improved on the recipe. I prefer the lowered roof version of the two. That's because the raised roof doesn't really look how a genuine raised canvas roof appears. 
To me, it looks more like a Popemobile with that raised glass. I really wish Lesney could have painted this one in other brighter colours and perhaps have included some trim detailing. The front and rear cast details really allow for it. I would have done a custom myself, but for my obsessive inner monologue telling me to restore all pre-1969 Superfast Matchbox to factory spec, then if I want to revisit any, I can customise them later on. Don't ask me why or to justify it, it's just the way my brain works. Here though, I'm playing with some styrene sheet. It's the first time I've really delved into crafting plastic parts. I thought recreating the interior table would be a good point to start from, and then I can work towards bigger and better things. That's as long as this table turned out alright. I dreaded tackling it at first. It took me an age to face it, as I kept putting the restoration on the back burner. But I got it right on my first try, so my confidence has been boosted. I know it sounds ridiculous, considering it's just two small pieces of plastic, but again, just the way this brain of mine operates. What I also did, but didn't record, as it's pretty dull, is add a small scrap of styrene to act as suspension. I fixed a rectangle on roughly where the previous piece had snapped off. You can see it here occasionally. I didn't add a little nodule on the end, as the styrene was quite firm and worked reasonably well on a quick mock-up test fit. So now I polish up the old raised window piece that was in remarkably good nick considering the state of the body. I had to source a reproduction for the lower roofed van as that was just too badly damaged. It did get a dunk in astonished wood floor polish though. I may be able to salvage the broken one if I cut out the damage to create an open sunroof on a custom, or replace it altogether with a more genuine looking canvas roof. We'll see. Happy with how my interior has turned around, I now spray it in TS12 orange and you'll see it for yourself how it has turned out in a moment. Not in this terribly lit garage. Back to the split screen again as we put them both back together. In first are the reproduction and restored window units respectively. Following those are the repainted and rinsed interiors respectively. And lastly the bases which slots in at the back and click together at the front. So here are my pair of 34 seat Volkswagen Camper variations. The later low roof one had a missing door, missing picnic table inside and a hole in the plastic window unit on top. By comparison, the high roof one had all of those parts intact but amazingly looked worse than the other in terms of paint at least. I also managed to dislodge a windscreen pillar on the low roof one to add to its woes. But here they are now. More yellow than amber, but the low roof van has a fresh reproduction window piece. Both have a beautiful gloss coat of aluminium, which sadly meant neither received silver trim. While the low roof T2 had a new door fitted, they were straightened out a touch on the high roof. And on the inside, I fixed the broken table by recreating it in styrene. I put both on the turntable with their doors open at the closing credits, so be sure to hang around long enough to see that. Otherwise, the wheels have all been washed in Citadel, axles polished and ends topped with chrome. But that is it for today. If you enjoyed this restoration pairing, please leave a like and do subscribe. Even better, join up as one of the growing community of Patreon members. Links are in the outro. So all that leaves me to say is thanks for watching and I'll see you again for the next one. Bye for now.